Welcome everyone to another episode of Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'm a mindset coach. So what we're going to be talking about today is going to be about my latest blog. So blogs come out every Monday at 10 a.m. And this blog is actually very interesting because the creator of the power process, he's actually crazy. And some people might say he's not crazy and he's just very real and 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 maybe he's just a different type of person. However, if you're going to be causing harm to people, I think that signifies maybe you got to screw loose, right? So the author, he's still alive. He's in prison right now. But what he had to say was actually quite profound. He was talking about a process, how people see themselves and see the world. And it relates very closely to how we view our goals. So if we're going to be very successful and we are successful, then we're happy. Happiness is ours. How And then vice versa, if we don't achieve any type of success, then we're stricken with sad, you know, sadness, depression, anxiety, all these negative things that we want to avoid that society sees as being negative. So simply understanding that idea alone, his concept on the power process is quite powerful because even though he has maybe some areas that we won't agree with, when he's talking about what the what humans really want, what people really want, and that's happiness, right? They want to be happy. They want to be successful. They want to feel needed, right? Because if we're just going through life with no purpose, then what is the purpose? And a lot of people struggle on finding their purpose, Many of my clients, they call and they say, I really don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my gift is. And I'm at this job right now and I don't really like it. And it's a whole process. Finding what you are meant to do is not as easy as saying, okay, well, let's just do this and see if it works, right? We have to really dig deep to what makes you tick, right? What makes you, you, right? What are your values? What type of character would you personify as yourself? You're a good person, bad person. Do you like helping people? Do you like giving? Then we like to talk about what you dislike also. Because if you don't like numbers, like math, then accounting is probably not your gift. Because you're going to, you know, dislike it. And maybe you might like accounting if you had a lot of money Maybe you had a salon or something or like a company and you just had so much money that you just wanted to count it all day. Hey, that's cool, right? I mean, you might, you might like counting then, but to do it for someone else, hmm. because your gift, your purpose, it doesn't matter if you're getting paid or if you're not getting paid because you should feel fulfilled in doing just that. So the power process breaks down what your goal should be, how you should view things, and then the process to get there. And the manifesto is on the Washington, on the Washington Post, and you can read the whole article. It's quite lengthy. It's going gonna, it's gonna to probably take like maybe an hour and a half, two hours to read, um, but when it comes to me breaking it down in the power process, the power process is what you need. In this blog, every bit is exactly what you should take away from that manifesto. And even though he had other areas about government and politics and things like that, that's not what I do, right? I'm not a politician. I'm not a, a news anchor. I'm a mindset coach. So when I receive something or if I learn about something that can be used to help benefit people, oh, I'm, I'm going to report that and I'm going to let you know about it. 
So without further ado, we're going to get into it. And I'm going to show you how to get to this blog on Google. And then from there, you can either follow along or you can just follow along in the video. So here we have Google and you can just simply type in my company's name. So here we have Revan Concepts. So once you are here, you just have to go to the website, Revan Concepts, and this is the landing page, but you just can go into the website and we know we need to get to the resources because we're trying to find some work. So here we have all of our live again. We're live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So those links are there and a reminder, but we're looking at blogs. So let's get into it. So here we have our TUS part 25, the power process. So TUS stands for tune up series. And I started the tune up series, I would say maybe two years ago now. And the reason I started the tune up series is because not everyone is able to hire a coach. Not everyone is going to be able to go through the process of having a coach and the benefits of having a coach, whether it be financial, maybe it's because of your region, you don't have cell phone service or set, you don't have any type of means to communicate to the outside world. But if you can get Wi-Fi every now and again, and you can download the blogs or you can just save the blogs to read for later, then you can understand that you don't really need a coach to become better, right? Coaching is for people who are trying to get to the next level. And if you're on ground zero and you know how to get out, then you don't need a coach, just get out. But what I find is people sometimes are at ground zero and they don't know how to give up, you know, like they don't know how to get out. And what you want is to get out. So if you can believe in investing in yourself and the process of going through what your mind is trying to tell you, hire a coach. Look for someone who's going to bring you to that next level. That's why mentors are so powerful. In the TUS series, it's just a computerized mentor me. is giving you little golden nuggets for you to follow. And once, you, and once you start reading all of them, you'll understand that those are just tools to put in your toolbox. So the power process is going to be talking about simply a three-step process. So identifying a goal, finding a purpose, there it is. Two, we're going to talk about the efforts toward achieving that goal. And then we're going to talk about the end results. And that's what we're going to be primarily focused on today. All right. So now that you know how to get to the power process, you can read the whole thing. Let's get into it. So what Americans are really good at or Western society civilization is really good at is telling people what they want, right? You hear it all the time in the news people with their political views, people with their activist ways, right? How, how, however rebellious you want to be or, how, or however political you want to be. Your opinion is your opinion. I respect your opinion. I respect everyone's opinion because I have an opinion also. But somewhere down the line, your opinion, or my opinion, right, is more important than your opinion. So my opinion is more important than your opinion, and you think your opinion is more important than my opinion. And you're not going to stop until I recite your opinion and hold it as my truth. That's where we are in society. If you don't believe what I believe, if you don't do what I do, you're the enemy. You're wrong. 
and that's causing a lot of discrepancy. It's causing a lot of hostility. It's causing a lot of people to create an unneeded fear in their minds and in their life. And we need to get out of that way of thinking. So, yeah, you could have an opinion. You could have your own goals and your own values and your own way of living. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you try to shove it down someone else's throat, that's where the problem starts to arise because people want to continue to live their life the way they want to live their life. And for me, it's not challenging when I'm telling people, hey, you can be better, right? You can have a better life and you can have all these wonderful things. However, it's up to you. If you don't want to reach that in your life, that's fine. I'm just telling you what you could attain if you choose to do so. And there's a lot of people who don't choose to do so. And I talked about the very wealthy in the world, right? Let's say are 20% of people who are extremely wealthy. And we have everyone else who's not. Maybe they're well off, right? Middle class or higher middle class. And they're doing well. But they're not doing great or amazing or living in abundance quite yet. They might be able to sustain the lifestyle they have, buy all the stuff they want. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about generational wealth. We're talking about where you change your whole life for everyone else in your whole entire family. And I'm not saying you need to carry your family on your back. Far from it. You shouldn't carry anyone who is not worth the weight. If they're not worth their weight in gold, toss them into the river. If they don't know how to swim, then Throw them like a floaty or something. We're not trying to drown people. But we're not going to allow ourselves to sink with them either. And sometimes you have to let people go. So when we talk about the power process, we're talking about what we are trying to accomplish with our life. Our goal, our purpose for ourself. What do you want? What do you want to accomplish, right? I know my goals, but do you know your goals? Do you do a weekly or a monthly or a yearly check-in on your goals? And I can say that people do yearly check-ins on their goals. New Year's. New Year's, they have a nice list of goals and all the things that they want to achieve. However, they don't have a plan to go along with their goals that they already wrote down or felt or thought about. And that's the problem. Because if people are going to have goals, but not have a plan, it's just a dream. You're dreaming. You're living in fantasy world where maybe Superman will come save you or you'll win the lotto. You can't chance your life on luck, but what you can chance life on is your actions and your effort, because that's certain. I can say I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to give 100% and I can do that. And you can do that too. So what is your goal? What do you want? Identify that. That's step one. Step one of the power process, know what you want, because if you don't know what you want, then you're going to go through life uncertain with where you should be. And I tell all my clients, it's important to know what you want, but then it's also important to know what you don't want, because if you're working at a dead end job and you're staying there on your own volition, why are you doing that? There's a reason. 
Most often the reason is you don't have a plan. Maybe you don't know how to start. Some people are lazy, but that's not everyone. Some people are really just at the point where dreaming is easier than doing. And they would rather be a dreamer than a doer. So your goal, attach some action to it. And then when we get into the proper type of action, then we can have the results that we're looking for. So the second step of the power process is talking about achieving that goal, right? Achieving that purpose. And there's ways you can do that, right? They have primary activities and then they have surrogate activities, right? Surrogate was in the manifesto. So that's why I wanted to continue to use it to just retain some of the transparency when you're reading it, if you do decide to read the whole manifesto. So talking about the first area, the primary activity. So the primary activity is going to be closely related to your habits. So the habits that are going to bring you some type of success. And those habits might be waking up on time, not hitting the snooze button, right? It might be eating a healthy breakfast. Maybe if you want to work out in the morning, you work out in the morning. On your commute to work, maybe you're listening to some type of educational podcast or series. At work, you're being productive, right? You're not on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. You're not worried about what happened in your friend's life. You're worried about your work, right? And it's not so much that you need to be immersed in your work, but you need to be efficient because that efficiency carries over into your life. If you're not efficient at work, you won't be efficient at home. And maybe that might be a little far to stretch because I'm sure there's going to be some people who are more efficient at home than they are at work. It's similar to how some people need to get out of the house in order to go and then they have an office somewhere else that's not in the home. And then they're more efficient there. And I understand that's going to be the case for some people, right? But that's not the case for everyone. People go to work. They'll do the bare minimum of what needs to be done. And then when they get home, they say, well, I'm pretty tired. And even though they have plenty more energy, I can guarantee you they have plenty more energy to do something, whether it be go to the gym, maybe go shopping and get healthy groceries if you don't have any, right? Doing all these things that are going to benefit you, right? These primary activities. Make your, and then before bed, maybe reading a book and then, you know, going to bed on, you know, at a reasonable time. All these, all these things add up to your primary activities. And if you can decide your habits, your day-to-day schedule, and then say, okay, this is going to help me. This is going to help me. This is not going to help me. Take out the things that are not going to help you or have three times more of the things that are going to help you that are not going to help you, right? That's like the magic number. So if you can start going to the gym, and it's not so much to say you're going to the gym to get in shape and to look a certain way, but going to the gym gives you energy boost, right? It helps boost your endorphins. And then you start to feel happier, you start to feel more confident, more energized. And all of those things are going to help you as the day progresses. So yes, if you work a nine to five, you're going to be tired, right? At the end of the day, you're tired. Maybe you, you don't want to deal with anything. Maybe you just want to be left alone and watch TV. Hey, that's cool. But how often do you do that? And how often do you say, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do something more productive. When I started the journey of starting my own business, I knew it wasn't going to be an easy task. I knew it was going to be very challenging. And the first thing I did Because I already had decent habits where I was 
going to the gym, I was eating healthy, meal prepping, I was doing all those things. But I needed something else, right? Because if you keep doing the same thing and you don't get the results that you're looking for, then that means you need to do something else. So I said, okay, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start reading. So I started reading books, about four books a month, average. So after reading those four books, every month for a year, started my business the next year. That was all knowledge I had gained. The primary activity I was doing was making sure I read four books every month to gain the knowledge and the skills I needed to start a business. So your primary activity should be directed at your growth. And your growth should be directed toward abundance and happiness and living the life that you want to live. So you have your goal. Then you have what's going, you know, the action plan, what steps need to be taken in order to get to the next level. And don't be fooled by taking a jump because a lot of people see the end and they want to get to the end. It's a lot of hard work along the way. Enjoy that journey. So instead of looking at the top of the mountain, say, okay, I'm going to look at the, you know, my scenery, what's around me. And if you're at rock bottom, it might not be much, right? Maybe if you look around, you see maybe a broken sofa or you might see maybe some panhandlers on the street. Pay attention to that and solidifying your brain and say, I'm going to get out of this situation. Give your brain something to work toward your primary activity. And then from there, you can start to see your life starting to evolve and change for the better. But then we have something called surrogate activities. And the thing about surrogate activities is that they are sometimes confused with your primary activities. You think you're doing something that's going to benefit you, but it's not actually going to benefit you. And I like to use fitness as an example because it's the easiest way to understand what a surrogate activity is. So me going to the gym is going to give me more confidence is going to give me more energy, is going to most likely give me some type of physique that I'm looking for, that I like and enjoy. However, the surrogate activity of going to the gym is not guaranteeing me a healthy life. Now, statistics show going to the gym means you're going to have a healthy life and you're going to live a lot longer than people who don't go to the gym. But it's not guaranteed. It's a statistic. So doing something because you think other people are going to see you doing this and says, oh, this is going to help me in some way. But it doesn't. It's a surrogate activity. So understand the things that you do. And for me, what I do is I tell people to do the 525 rule. And it's something Warren Buffett came up with. The 525 rule is talking about writing a list of 30 things that you want in your life, right? 30 things you want to do, maybe places you want to go, etc. right? So once you have that list of 30 things, and typically after like 15, you start struggling because you're like, I don't really know what I want. I already got my top 15. I'm After that, I'll be happy. However, you got to get 30. So now once you have your 30, you want to only pick five of those things. Because if you can pick five of those things, you can pinpoint your focus, primary activities. Those primary activities are going to help you get where you want to be, not the surrogate activities. So to be able to differentiate between the two, 
have to read the blog, right? Because it, it breaks it down into different examples where, okay, maybe this example is going to work better for you. This example or this analogy is going to work better for you because everyone learns differently. Sometimes I might have to use fitness as an example. Sometimes I might have to use relationships as an example. And it's all a different way to connect, all a different way to help you understand maybe what is going on, right? Maybe what you're thinking, how you operate. Because again, you operate different than the next person. So the goals that you have are going to be different than the goals someone else has. And even if you want someone to accomplish what you accomplish, your goals, because you think your goal is superior than what they would ever achieve or dream of in their life, that's wrong. Because what was meant for them is going to be for them. And what is meant for you is going to be for you. And you can cheer people on as much as you want. You can encourage people as much as you want. And you can try to stop people as much as you want. But people at the end of the day are going to do what they want. Look at teenagers. When they hit... 15, 16, they think they know everything. Why is that? They're only 15 and 16. They've only been on this earth for a decade and a half. But yet they know everything. And it's because the way their brain is functioning and developing, where their environment, their knowledge all accumulates to their truth. And they have enough at that age where they feel, keyword feel, they use their emotions, that they're good. They don't need anything. They're going to be happy with what they got. They don't need anyone's help. And yes, we, we do have some wonderful teens that listen to their parents and do what they're supposed to do and handle their business, go off to college maybe, maybe get a career in the family business, etc. It's not everyone, but the majority of teens are going to struggle in this area. It's no surprise why I have high school graduates emailing me saying, hey, I don't want to make a mistake. What do I do in my life? They're 18 and they're worried about making a mistake. If I make a mistake, I might not be ecstatic I made the mistake. However, I'm capable of understanding that that mistake or that failure is a good thing. It's going to help me grow in some area. Oh, don't do that. I learned. And a lot of people, they don't learn. They keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Their habits reoccurring, reoccurring, same thing over and over again. It's a cycle. We need to get rid of that cycle. So one, identify our goal, your purpose, right? What do you want? Two, what actions are going to get you there? And then making sure you understand that some actions that you think are going to get you there, because again, thinking like a teen, oh, I know. I already know everything. I know I know what to do. I was 18 when I started investing. I knew everything, right? Because I was a teenager. And I knew everything. Lost half my money. I think within a year. I was like, hmm, I don't know everything. I learned. I was a failure. But I learned. And now, I can be successful in my investments. But I needed that failure. To wake me up. Just like how we have some children, some people who need to get burned before they listen. I can tell someone that there's a cliff right over the horizon or right, you know, like right over the um, cliff top. And I say, make sure you don't fall off the cliff. Right, because we're riding up there and they're going full speed and they're like, I'm living my life the way I want to live. I'm like, all right, cool. They get to the top and they're living their life the way they want to live. They don't want to listen to me. And they get up to the top and they fall off the cliff. And then 
when I go down and I see them, they say, why did you not tell me there was a cliff there? I was like, oh, must have forgot. It's not that I forgot. It's that they forgot to listen. Wisdom. Wisdom is listening. Someone went through it already, has some experience, some knowledge on it. Why not use that wisdom and make it your own? It's the quickest way to A to B is wisdom. And that's where we struggle. So we're trying to get to an end, right? We have our goal, our purpose, then we have our actions and all the things that we do in our day, our habits. But then either we're successful or we're not successful. So what happens if we're successful, right? We're happy. We are satisfied with life. We feel good. We feel confident. We have all these wonderful feelings. We're more ambitious because we're going to go after more now. We say, we did this. We can do anything. But there's a negative side too. What happens if you fail? And that fear of failure is enough to make anyone not follow their dreams is enough to stop people from even trying to achieve something more in their life. We got to get rid of that fear of failure. We got to get rid of the fear of the unknown. Because a lot of people are stuck right now because they're afraid of something. And it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to worry or put some attention to a negative idea or area in your life, but with the purpose to solve it, not just to ruminate on it and wonder why your life's not getting any better. So don't think that simply waiting for good times to come, good times are going to come. You're not guaranteed good times. You're not guaranteed success. You're not guaranteed winning in life and being wealthy. That's not a guarantee. But you can start to make the world go along with what you want. Put things more in your favor. Action. That's step two. And then we have making sure we get there. Making sure we can achieve our goal. Making sure we can maintain our goal. And I see this often with fitness clients. They say, I want to lose all this weight. Okay? This is what you got to do. Your goal, losing weight. The actions needed. Maybe going to the gym, diet, etc. right? Success is, did you maintain those actions? Did you do what needed to be done? Because no one's looking for a hero at the gym. Do what you can today so you can do more tomorrow. And I think people struggle with that idea. I think people think that if they work hard today... They're going to be able to catch up. Well, guess what? The reason why dentists say to brush your teeth twice a day for two minutes is because brushing your teeth for twenty for 28 minutes one time a week is not going to cut it. It's not. So you have to understand life is not a game to catch up. It's every day you make sure you do everything you can to progress and become better. Because if you're going to waste a day away, understand that now you are a day, a month, a year behind from where you could have been. 
that small stoppage, that hurdle, that fumble can turn the whole game around. So what do you do? Take a break. Don't try. How about you start? And you don't start until you're finished. And then when you finish, you don't start until you feel accomplished. And you don't feel accomplished until you are successful. And you don't become successful until you have the life that you dream of. And it's easy to dream. It's easy to understand that what I'm doing right now has some type of meaning. Look around you. Look at the people who have done exactly what you have been doing. Where are they at age 65? What do they have in their life? Who have they helped? Is that the life that you want? Because if it's not, then you start, then you need to start to look for different avenues and ways for you to become the person you want to be. And the best way I have found that is to get a mentor. Because those people are going to be in places where you would like to be. Whether it is financial. Maybe if you wanted to have a relationship, you got a relate like a relationship coach. For me, it's mindset. I'm a mindset coach. I help people with the way they think. I help them become more powerful in the way they think, to find solutions and problems, to be more mentally strong and fortified to all the negativities of the world. When you hear bad news, what's the first thing that goes in your brain? Oh my God, oh my gosh. This this can't be happening. Or is it, okay, what's next? Right? Looking for the problems, then finding the solutions. People find the problems. They're real good at finding problems. Look at the news. They have, they have 99 problems. But there's no solutions. And the solutions go against opinion. So, oh, I have a solution, but it's my opinion. How is that a solution? I told you in the beginning your opinion is not relevant to everyone. I want success. I want you to be successful. But if you don't want to be successful, how can you be successful? It's not possible. There's a saying, you could bring a horse you know, to the river, but you can't make him drink. And that's people. And the sooner people realize that it's not so much about what everyone else is doing, but what they're doing, then they can get over this fear. They can get over this. My opinion is better. These people that are not doing what I'm doing are dumb, are stupid, are idiots. I hear that a lot. Just because someone is not doing what they're doing. And I find it so bizarre how someone can say, you have to do this because I did it. And then the other person says, I'm not going to do it because you did it. Causes some type of crazy tension. So we have to get out of that right there. That's not part of the power process because what that is going to cause is going to cause anxiety, depression, negativity. That's all on the blog. And it shows you what activities you should be focused on. Because if you're going to be focused on things that are not serving you, like worried about who did what and who did what with who or whatever, who has what type of car, or what type of clothes or purse or whatever. And 
I understand there's a lot of people who enjoy that type of drama or to like to see that visionary cue in their brain saying, oh, this person has this. I would like to have that for myself. So, yeah. Nothing wrong with seeing something and then telling yourself, hey, I want that for myself too. Because if you can get to the point where you're saying, all right, I want this because I want this, not because so-and-so has it or because so-and-so said I should, then you can get down to yourself, the nitty gritty, you. Because what matters at the end of the day is that you're good. And I talk a lot about filling up your cup. And it's a very selfish type of concept, making sure that you're good first. Selfish, right? You should put everyone else first, not yourself. That's greedy. No, it's not. The reason why focusing on yourself is so important is because it helps you become more able to help other people. It makes you stronger, right? If I had a dollar and I invested it in Tesla and I got a hundred dollars from Tesla, right? That one dollar that I invest it, I can give to a hundred people if I want, right? I can take that hundred dollars, reinvest it in Tesla, get a thousand dollars. Okay. Got a thousand dollars, right? I can give that to a thousand people. Everyone has a dollar. Okay. Let's go back. I could put a thousand dollars in a Tesla, get 10,000 and so on and so on. I could have gave that dollar to a panhandler when I got to a red light. One person. Or I can make sure my money was good. I'm good. And then I can help more people. Abundance type of thinking. And I'm not holding on to the dollar because I feel like I can't get any more dollars. I'm holding on to that dollar because I understand that I can use the dollar better than this person can. And not saying that they don't need this dollar, but I can help more people if I hold on to this dollar for now. So what happen if so what would happen if you said, I'm going to work on myself today. I'm going to work on all the areas of my life that are not on par with where I would like them to be. What would happen? Maybe in a day, you might already regret, you know, committing to that. Saying, oh, there's a lot of work. I really don't feel like doing this. A lot. You're, you're definitely not alone in that way of thinking. But what happened if you did it for a month and then a year and your whole life changed? And you can help whoever you wanted to in the world. Anyone. Any amount of people. Would you rather that? Or would you rather helping just a few people? Yes, I already know there's going to be arguments about help everyone you can right now. Hmm. Okay. Help them. I'm not going to stop you. That's your opinion. I'm not here to change your opinion. I'm here to tell you the truth. If you take care of yourself, you're going to be able to take care of more people. Better. That's all I'm saying. And when it comes to our ideals and it comes to our careers, it seems like many people have other people kind of up there and us down here. Your boss. Yeah, he's, you know, he gives you the job and maybe signs your check or the kind of people sign your check, whatever. Right. He's just a regular person, too. He started 
from somewhere and he got to where he was or she. He or she got to where they was or were. So understanding that the journey alone is better than to have a hundred people who are weighing you down. And if you choose to have someone that you're carrying along the way, hey, that's fine. But understand it's going to take you longer to get to where you want to be. Because they might not be as hungry as you are. They might not be as resilient as you are, whether it be physically or mentally. Because some people are going to give up as soon as the times get rough. Who do you have around you? Are these people following along the power process, going to their goal, which is our third step, our final step in being successful and achieving their goals? Or are you going through someone's doing the power process and they're and they're finding themselves short in every single area? They don't have any ambition. They don't have any goals. They don't have any purpose. They're going through life, just going through life. No purpose, no direction. I, I woke up. Oh, I went to bed. Oh, I woke up. Oh, it's New Year's already. Time flew. Why did time fly? Maybe you're having fun, right? Time flies when you're having fun. But also time flies when you don't pay attention. When you don't pay attention to what's going around you in your life and you just let life happen and then you wonder why you don't have anything down the road you're thinking well I was doing all the right things and this happened there's something negative there's something holding you back right now because if you're not where you need to be there's something holding you back or you have to go along with the process but more so something's holding you back. And success is not immediate. Now, you know, I I hear people say they want success and they want all these wonderful things, in, you know, for their life, yet they want it immediately, immediate gratification. And that's another issue we're having, immediate gratification. And if they don't get it immediately, they go right to our third step again, which is our failure, Right the disruption that they're feeling in their life. They say, well, I can't have this. So I, you know, it must not be for me. And, you know, I, I wasn't meant to have a good life. That's what they might say. And then they're going to chalk up all their effort to being pointless. Anything after is pointless. So they're not worried about going after more They'll take the scraps that the world has given them. They'll take the scraps that the government's given them. They'll take the scraps that their significant other has given them. And then they'll say, I deserve better. But they never go after it. Don't condition yourself to be less of a person than you can be. Because if you condition yourself to be less you're going to have all these negative all these negative effects on your brain why do you think depression is running so rampant anxiety trauma hate racism prejudice the list goes on that's not by accident it's because our minds are not focused on better it's not focused on positive. Focus on negative. The news is negative. And if you watch the news, you are filling up with negativity. Because you're going to have your opinion, because the news told you something, and either you're going to curse the news or you're going to agree with the news. And if you agree with the news, that's fine. If you curse the news, that's fine. By the end of the day, is that helping you in some way? Most likely not. 
If you watch the news, you're misinformed. If you don't watch it, if you don't watch the news, you're uninformed. So how do you get your news? How do you get the data, the information, the knowledge to be functional? Well, the first step is investing in yourself. If it doesn't serve you, toss it away. If you don't have an action plan and you are trying to do something over and over again and you do not succeed or you do not fulfill it, throw it away. Start again. Because if you already told your brain, your mind, to do something and you didn't do it, now is even more difficult. And the power process goes through that. The power process talks about going after what you want. And if you don't do it, the consequences for not getting it. There's consequences for your actions. Because at the end of the day, we all want to be someone. We all want to be proud. We want someone to be proud of us. We want to be happy. How many people think Something is going to make them happy. Someone is going to make them happy. If this person did this, then I will be happy. If people just did this, then I will be happy. You hear it all the time. And currently in the news, we'll go back to normal. <laughs> normal. My life has been normal since they said it wasn't normal. That's their opinion. Normal never left. Regular never left. And it didn't happen by accident. I choose what I want for myself. And when people choose what they want for themselves and they say, hey, Michael, I want this for myself. I say, let's go get it. And let's not stop until we get it. And I can tell there's sometimes when they're like, hey, I just want a break. I just, you know, I need to take it easy. All right. Well, do you want it or do you not want it? And I said this in one of my first motivational videos. A lot of people just kind of want it. They want the good life. They want to fulfill their goals and to have a purpose and to be happy in what they do. They kind of want it. Because it looks good on Netflix and it looks good in Hollywood and it looks good in other people's life. But when it comes to us doing the work, many people decide, I don't want to do the work. So I'm going to settle. I'm going to settle for less than what I deserve. And if you're going to continue to settle for less you're going to feel more and more and more inferior every day. And the power process breaks that down. If you read the whole manif you know, if you read the whole manifesto, the power process is about who's in power. But when we're talking about simply the power process, you are in power. Your mind, your choices have consequences whether it be positive or negative. I lean more on the side of being positive. That's where I help people get to more positive, more resilient, more ambitious. Because having a mindset where you feel like you can't achieve something, it's got, you know, it's going to be very difficult to get someplace in life, you know, like in your life. And you just have to, at some point, say, all right, I, I don't care what, it, you know, what it's going to take. I want to achieve something. I want to achieve greatness. I want to achieve some type of prosperity for myself and for my family. Especially if you have a family. 
And it doesn't matter if you're a man. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. You can achieve anything you want. But it requires work. And if you are not willing to put in the work, you're never going to have what it is you're going after. Don't allow your dreams to remain dreams. The power process, this TUS 25 blog right here is talking about the steps you need to take to get into power, to overcome your weaker self and become more resilient, more powerful, more ambitious. And then all those things that you want that you don't have right now are going to start to come to you so easily. And you're going to wonder why you never did that before. What took you so long? And the reason why is because you were complacent where you were. People don't change because they feel like changing. People change because of certain type of trauma. In what in the easiest way I, I you know I can explain uh, trauma and people changing is a loss of job, a loss of relationship, a loss of life. Sometimes money, but mo- you, you can always get more money. So some, if someone loses money, they might be hurt, but at the same time, it's not going to enact a certain amount of change because if that was the case, we wouldn't have gambling and we wouldn't have lotto tickets anymore. Life, love, and your job. Try to work on those three areas. Apply the power process to those three areas and then to see if anything changes right? What changes, what doesn't change. And if you need some help, you can email me. This series is geared at answering questions that you have, whether it be about our topic or your life in general. Email me at coachingincession at gmail.com. And you can put in the subject box, what is your question? What do you need help with? And simply just say, your question or your situation. I'll email you back, maybe a little bit of information. And I will warn you, I won't ever share your name or any of that, but the topic I will be talking about on the air live Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I will talk about them. And the reason I will talk about them is because if you're having that idea, that problem, I can almost guarantee you other people are having a very similar situation. Your problem is helping more people. So email me your problems. I will offer a solution in the email and then also live again Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for tuning in to Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. Until then, take care.